Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to my tutorial series on AM Designer. Today we're going to be going over some best practices for how to design a form using flowed layouts and subforms. So right now I got the deviation report subform open. And so in the past I've talked about how important it is, how vital it is to have expandable text fields. And additionally, I've also talked about how important it is to use flowed layouts in order to do this. But I also mentioned that they're less intuitive, they're less user friendly to use flowed layouts as opposed to position layouts. Now position layouts, if you'll recall that tutorial on the differences between fluid and positioned, position layouts are very easy and intuitive to use. You know, you just take your content, you just take your content and you pin it wherever you want. You can manually click and drag it to the appropriate coordinates or you can go to the layout window and then you can set your X, your Y, and the width and height. But you can't do that with Float. Now, there are a couple of tricks that you can do to, you know, make your form look more aesthetically pleasing while still keeping a Float layout. So let's take a look at the deviation number subform. Over here. So all these things are in this particular form. So let's look at what's in this subform. So we have a line, so we have a horizontal line. We have a subform within that, which has the text, another line, which is a vertical line in the middle. And we have a text field on the right hand side. So that's in a nested subform. It's untitled as of yet. Uh, and then again, we have a another horizontal line. So why do we have it organized in this way? So let's just get rid of this subform for a second. And I'll I'll let you see for yourself what will happen if we take this content out of that subform. Well, that just that just doesn't look very good at all. So, what I just what I just did there is I took T7, L53 and Text21. I took all three of those objects out of the subform and I put them into the deviation number subform. And now now it just looks terrible. So we have a horizontal line, a text object, we have our vertical, like short mini line, our text field, and then our big horizontal line again. Now, this is happening, as you might suspect, because we're in a flowed layout. You know, that's how it works. We can't set the location, the coordinates of any of these objects. So, you know, we just have to deal with it, right? So the reason why this occurs is because the deviation number subform, it is flowed content, but additionally, it's flowed top to bottom. So designer it loyally follows these instructions. So all this content will be stacked on top of each other like pancakes, you know, from top to bottom with no consideration for, you know, looking good for having any amount of order. So the way we get around this is, is through clever nesting and use of subforms, which is how I did it here. So in the untitled subform, it is indeed flowed, which is necessary, but additionally, it is, the flow direction is Western text. So it's western text instead of top to bottom that is the flow direction that is the direction that content will be stacked essentially and there's three options we can do top to bottom as with the parent subform western text as we do with this internal subform or right to left which is left to right but the opposite so with western text i'm going to put all of that content back in and then it goes back to normal because now according to designer so if we go back to our subform, we have deviation number. So this is flowed top to bottom. So we have our horizontal line. And then below that horizontal line, we have the entire subform. And the, hor and the entire subform flows left to right. So text, line, text field. But all of that content is below L55 and above L56. And as you can see, this looks much better than you know, what we had previously when the content was outside of the subform. And so that's just a very handy trick that I found that will make designing your forms a lot easier in general as you move on. So that's pretty much all there is to that. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time when I'm going to talk about designing forms with accessibility in mind from the get-go. Until then, take care.